how to do on-site SEO with AI tools. We're gonna to touch on four main things when it comes to on-site SEO. Please keep in mind, there are a lot more things to on-site SEO. These are the ones that I believe are gonna have the most impact on your website. It's gonna be design, loading time speed, the metadata and image SEO. We're gonna need a few tools to do this and analyze this correctly and don't worry, they're all free. You're gonna need GT Metrics, Google AI Studio, SEO Wallet, and of course, Chat GPT. This is part one in a four part video series that's all a playlist on YouTube on how to do SEO with AI in 2025. We're gonna to touch on on-site SEO first, then keyword research, SEO content, and backlinks. Backlinks isn't gonna be with AI so much, but it's something that you really need for SEO. So if you wanna watch all the videos, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and you'll get the other videos that will come very, very soon. In the video descriptions below, there'll be a link. There'll be a link to this Google Sheet that has all of the resources that I go through in this video. So don't worry, anything that I talk about will be listed in the video descriptions below. And if you're wondering who the hell I am and why I should trust this random guy on YouTube for their SEO, great question. That's a question that you should be asking. My name's Nico. I run an online community called the AI Ranking School Community, where we help people to rank their websites and their business number one with AI tools and automations. For example, like Stephen Marks with his SEO agency, after indexing 127 pages with an automation that we provided him, his client is now getting 99 booked appointments each month purely from organic traffic alone. His client never has to pay for Google Ads again. You need to get your tools ready. GT Matrix, Google AI Studio, SEO Wallet, and of course, ChatGPT. For this video, we're gonna use we're going to use this website, which is Ethical Dog Training. This is a dog training business working out of Melbourne, Australia. This is important to know so we can amend, so we can audit this website correctly. The first thing that we need to understand is design. And more importantly, design that aids conversion, that will increase the conversion rate of your website. I have a saying that I need to put in a t-shirt that is never underestimate stupidity in large numbers, particularly in the internet. It sounds mean, but what I mean here is that you need to make it stupidly simple for the user to understand what action they're supposed to be taking the second they land on your website. And that's both on the desktop and the mobile perspective. Arguably, mobile is even more important. So here, when I land on this page, I don't see a call to action. There's no button to contact now or call us today. Now you might say, well, that's fine, but people tend to scroll down and you'd be right. But data demonstrates the more you get to, the, the more you expect people to scroll down, the more people you lose and they're not going to convert. So when we scroll down, we see finally here, read more, but we don't even see the contact us now button. So that call to action is not the best. If we scroll down again, we start seeing how they work. And now they've got testimonials. You really want that on the home page of your website if you've got them as well. And then finally, we get the first call to action here, which is a little too late. So one thing that I would do right away is think about conversions. I'd probably add a contact us now button or get a free consultation button right here so people can see it. Call to action CTA. You're gonna be you're gonna be hearing me say that quite a bit in this video. So let's say you you've never looked at a website from a conversion rate perspective and you don't really know how to even approach it. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna here use Google AI Studio. In Google AI Studio, once you make an account, which is completely free by the way, I want you to click the stream real time and I've left this prompt here ready for you. This prompt just turns Gemini into an expert SEO. You're gonna leave that in the system instructions. Once you've got that prompt ready, you're gonna click on share your screen. You're gonna do entire screen and go here. And then we're going to go to our website. Uh, hey, Gemini, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I see you've navigated to the website, ethicaldogtraining.com, D-O-T. So what's happening at the moment is we're using Gemini 2.0 Flash, which is a omni-model AI, meaning that it can intake as import video, uh, audio, text, practically anything, and it can help you out. So this is going to review our website and provide some advice for us as well. Let's see how it works. I'm gonna start the new stream, share your screen. Hey Gemini, can you give me some advice on the homepage of this website? Uh, what do you think I should add here on the first fold? Sure, let's take a look at the homepage of ethicaldogtraining.com.tau. First, I will do a quick search on Google to understand the context of the business. Could you also share the GT metrics report for this page so I can analyze its performance? Okay, let's focus on the current view of the homepage. Looking at the first fold, the heading, empowering you and your dog to success is a good start, but let's make it more specific to improve SEO and attract the right audience. I can share some recommendations if you like. Please go ahead. 
Okay, for better SEO, consider making the heading more specific. Instead of empowering you and your dog to success, try something like ethical dog training in your city slash region, leash reactivity and obedience experts. This targets local searches and includes keywords like dog training, leash reactivity, and obedience. Would you like to explore some other options as well? No, this is great. What about a call to action? Do you have any ideas? For a call to action on the first fold, consider adding a button right below the main headline. Something like book a free consultation or view our training packages would encourage immediate engagement. Great. What you do mean, you think about that? You mean something like this where I'm putting the red box? Yes, exactly like that red box. It is a great visual way to make the call to action stand out and encourage users to take the next step. Perfect. Now you can see how this Gemini 2.0 Flash is helping me review the website. You can ask it questions back and forth, but make sure you have everything ready because you can only speak to it 10 minutes at a time. So let's continue uh, understanding the website here. It gave us some great advice about the metadata. And now that we've done the design perspective, let's have a look at that. Now with SEO Wallet installed, this is a Chrome extension that is fantastic and it's free. We're going to go to the website here and we're going to understand if the metadata is correct. More importantly, the main keywords such as the title keywords, the H1s and the H2s. If we slide all our cursor all the way to the left, we're going to see this blue bar. That's the Chrome extension which we've installed. This is going to allow us to take a peek underneath the website, so to speak. And you can see here that the title tag just says home ethical dog training. It's good having your brand name like ethical dog training, for example, but the key word about dog training in Melbourne is nowhere to be seen. This is terrible from an SEO perspective. So I would probably change that uh, here, the title tag to say professional dog training services in Melbourne, ethical dog training, right? So that way Google knows that those are the keywords that you intend to rank. Also, the meta description is missing. Meta description is really important for your click through rate from the search engine results page to your website. This needs to be around ideally below 155 characters in length to be able to do one. Make sure that you have a good call to action in your meta description. Now, if we click the H1, the heading optimizations here, we can see what the headings are on the home page. The H1 just says your dog to success. That's not clear enough. We need to understand your leash reactivity training or professional training services in Melbourne. The H1 should also mirror that keyword here. And now we've got the H5 service services for all breeds of dogs. That probably should be a H2 or H3. You need to think about, make sure that you integrate those keywords that you wanna focus on all throughout the website in the H1s and H2s. We can spend a whole video on this, but I just want to leave it there. Think about the main keywords that you want to rank for and does your home page or even your services pages have those keywords as you think people are searching for it. Now, the next thing that we're going to look at is GT Metrics. GT Metrics is a website loading time speed tool. It tells you how quickly or slowly your website is loading. Now, let's understand this first before we dive into it. When you go on a website regularly, Modern browsers will save the files of that website locally. So somewhere in your website, somewhere on your computer. So that next time you go on the website, it can get those files a lot quicker. So for you, your website experience on your site might be a lot quicker, but it doesn't actually mean that your other new users to your website have the same experience. For example, this website is loading at nearly six seconds, which is way too slow. GT Metrics is a free tool that you can use to analyze your website. So once you go onto GT Metrics, you'll have this here. What I want you to do is place in your URL and go analyze. I believe you get a few free users a day. Uh, I've got the paid version so I can do as, much, as many as I like. It's gonna take a little while and it's analyzing the website and seeing what is wrong with it from a loading time speed perspective. I can scroll down here and then it's telling me the key things that are resulting in a slow loading website. And I can see here that some of the main things are actually to avoid enormous work payloads. This just means that some of the files on the website are extremely heavy. Like here, one of these ones is a PNG, a very heavy image file. You don't need PNGs anymore on your website and you shouldn't at all. And it's telling us a way to do that, right away to do that. 
If you don't understand what any of these things mean, because they're maybe just worded in a very technical manner, which is fair enough, I even have that problem sometimes, what you're going to do is you're going to share this and download as a PDF. You're going to get the downloadable PDF. Then in the files that are provided, you're going to click on the first link there. This is a custom GPT that I've built for you guys for this video. What I want you to do is just drop that PDF into this and hit enter. And it's going to give you an actionable step-by-step -step guide into what you should do and how you should fix this website. It's also telling you, well, what does this stuff actually mean, right? So it's telling me right away that the priorities that I need to fix. And it's telling me the, the solution is to compress the images like we talked about, remove unnecessary optimized images, optimize the videos by hosting them on YouTube and all these other things. I can defer off-screen images so I can implement lazy loading. And it's also even gives you the plugins if you've got WordPress there installed. It's not to say that only WordPress is the best SEO website. No, but it gives you advice for that as well. Uh, and here's the things that I really wanted to touch on. So serve images in a next gen format. Images have outdated format. Like I said, PNG or JPEG, you should convert images to a WebP. It also gives you other advice here and a summary checklist as well for you to follow, or you can give this to your web developer to say, hey, my website's slow, you need to fix this, here's how to do it. So now that we've gone through the design, the loading time speed and the metadata, we're going to do the image SEO because that's what was actually causing a lot of problems with the loading time speed. So we're going to kind of kill two birds with one stone here. Image SEO, there's really a few fundamentals that you need to know. One, you need to make sure that the image is optimized itself. So let's go back to the GT metrics report and understand which image was really heavy and causing the website to load slow. This one's the main one here. And if we take a look at it here, it's this one. So this is a heavy PNG, which we don't need. You need to convert this image into a WebP file and then re-upload it to your website. There is hundreds of free image conversion tools. For example, I'm going to save this image and show you right away, smiling dog. I'm going to save that. See, it's 3.3 megabytes at the moment. Doing a quick Google search, I'm going to go to uh, PNG to uh, WebP, for example, and using Convert.io, which is a free tool. I believe you get 10 conversions per day. I'm going to drop that image here and I'm going to convert it. Remember, it was 3.3 megabytes. Let's see how much we save here. Right, so now the WebP file is 1.3 megabytes, so nearly half the size. And if we download the image and we take a look at it, we, will re we won't be able to see the differences in the, uh, in the quality itself. At least I don't think so anyway. So what you want to do is make sure that all your images on your website to start off with are WebP files. And you need to ensure that with your images, you have the title and the alt tag for the images. For example, if we take a look at this website here, we see that they're missing a lot of the titles and the alt, and the alt tags for it. This image, for example, this image, for example, the image says the alt tag is happy dog and it doesn't have a title. It shouldn't really say that. It should be black and white Labrador running happily on a grass, for example. The alt tag should describe the image and even the title of the image itself when you upload it should say black and door Labrador, for example. Those two things will attribute to good image SEO, giving you this little bump in SEO as well. And that is it, but you can rewatch this video a couple of times. So just to clarify, we went through the design and make sure your website is designed for a conversion rate friendly perspective. Have the call to action visible as soon as people land on the website. Loading time speed. You need to make sure that your website is loading as quickly as possible. This isn't only good from an SEO perspective, but from a conversion rate optimization perspective as well. The metadata. The metadata was those keywords that we took a look at with the help of this SEO wallet plugin, right? Remember, the title tag here didn't have anything about dog training in Melbourne. This is a business that provides dog training services in Melbourne. So that main keyword should be there very prevalent in the main title of the home page. And finally, the image SEO. Image SEO really just make sure that the image is as light as possible. Ideally have a WebP file, not a PNG, and make sure it has a correct alt tag and a title tag for that image. Again, if you don't know what how to do any of these things, there's free tools that you can use that will break this down for you. Make sure you can use Google AI Studio and you can chat back and forth with this website in terms of how to improve your site. And 
by going to the custom GPT that I provided earlier, which is the GT metrics report analyzer, you'll be able to understand what are the first things that you should do to improve the loading time speed of your website. Thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, consider subscribing and like this video and make sure you watch the next video in this series, which is keyword research, where we're going to keep it nice and simple, but effective. I'll catch you. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.